hope life is treating you well. I've been working pretty much non-stop since the end of March with my wedding photography and whilst I have lots of processing and photos to do, this weekend has been a time for me to down tools and unwind. Uh, I completed a secret of mana on the SNES or perhaps I think was my second time and I'm definitely going to miss my little mana sessions this week so I need to think about what I'm going to play next. I'm halfway playing through Grandia on the PlayStation so I think I might be uh, picking that up and carrying that on now that the darker evenings are drawing in. Oh, I don't like winter very much. Anyway, today I wanted to put together my next part on how to draw pixel art. Um, although we're taking a little sideways diversion today to look at colour. Uh, a lot of people struggle with coming up with nice colours for their artwork uh, or their games, so I think this uh, episode will really help you. I think part of this comes down to not quite understanding some basic things about mixing colour. I remember when I was little we were always mixing paints and we were taught from a young age that the primary colours were yellow, red and blue. Uh, making darker and lighter colours could be achieved with a, a bit of black or white paint um, and I think we also learnt that by mixing yellow and blue for example you could make green, red and yellow to make orange and you could also uh, mix blue and red to make purple and in effect mixing all three would give you black uh, but I remember feeling very confused the first time that I tried changing the colours in Dulux paint when we first got hold of uh, an Amiga because there was no yellow uh, in the colour mixer, uh, there was green instead. Now this problem persists even to today because uh, you will find in Photoshop that RGB values are uh, very prominent in it and you'll find on the web that RGB values are very prominent so it's not just a retro um, system issue this um, and I was always really confused with this how could you mix colours without yellow and it turns out that red, green and blue was just another way of mixing colours which when mixed worked similar to yellow, red and blue so for example mixing red and green together in equal parts will result in yellow and mixing green and blue will give you cyan and so on and so forth. The problem is that mixing RGB is not the most intuitive of things. Uh, like to create a pale yellow, you'll need to know that once you have your yellow by having your red and green components in equal parts, you'll need to introduce blue. And how are you going to make a darker yellow, like a deep mustard colour? Well again you need red and green to lesser values, but with a bias towards red and you'll still need blue to counteract the bias towards either orange or lime tones. I guess this may leave you confused, and if you are, well that's okay because there is actually a better way to mix colours and this applies even to modern systems today. A better way to mix colours to use hue, saturation and luminance, or HSL colour. Sometimes luminance is referred to as value, making it HSV colour. Dulux paint refers to this as HSV colour. Um, so what do these three things mean? Hue is generally what we call the colour. There are more posh ways of describing what the hue is, but think of it as a rainbow of colour uh, that starts at red and works its way through all the rainbow colours uh, of orange, yellow, green, indigo, violet, and then unlike a rainbow, back to red again. This colour spectrum is demonstrated here, and by using hue we can, without having to think, how do I mix purple for example, we can instead move the hue value to where purple is in the spectrum. If you know the colours of the rainbow, you will understand this. The only thing to remember is that to get pink tones, you will need to go beyond violet, where the hue begins to wrap back around to red. So up next is saturation. The more saturation you have, the more intense the hue you have chosen will be. So say you have set the hue to a simple violet. The saturation will in effect determine how much violet you will get. There is a relationship here with luminance. Um, here you can see the extreme examples of having either the luminance turned all the way down or turned all the way up, but let's assume the luminance is set to full for this explanation. As you increase the saturation, the more intense the hue gets and the more violet the colour will be, but if you reduce the saturation, you'll eventually get white because you've totally desaturated the hue. Moving on to luminance, because as suggested, hue, saturation and luminance are all symbiotically related. This is essentially the brightness of the colour you are creating. So take for example that you have your violet hue and that the saturation is set to full and you've also set the luminance to full, you'll have a very intense violet. But then if you dial the luminance back down, leaving the hue and saturation exactly where they were, you'll eventually have black 
because you're taking the brightness out of the shade. So now you can see how these work together. So it's important to actually sort of just look at some colours that I've created here. There's a couple of pastel tones and there's also a deeper, richer colour as well as a fairly average middle toned colour. Um, so the simple things that we need to look out for is that you'll tend to find that uh, with pastel tones uh, that you'll find the saturation is relatively low compared to the luminance or value as Dulux Paint calls it here. It's just a general trait of pastel colours. You will set the hue to whatever you want it to be. So in this case, this one is set to the yellow spectrum, but the saturation is dialed right back and that the luminance is quite high because as soon as you start increasing that saturation, you're going to get a much brighter and much more stronger uh, level of saturation of colour, making it sort of more luminous, basically. Um, and this also applies to the mint green here, except in this case, obviously the hue is pointed at the green part of the spectrum. But again, you'll see here that the saturation is relatively low compared to the luminance of the value. And just to show you what happens when we drag down the value, you'll essentially um, remove sort of uh, the brightness or the lightness of the, the shade and you'll get sort of darker toned images. And again, this ends up with uh, colours that look desaturated and end up slightly towards the greyer end of the uh, colour um, level as it were so you can see sort of there's more of a greyish tone now coming out here so I'm just gonna undo that and for deeper colours you will tend to find that the saturation is relatively high compared to the luminance or the value um, it doesn't really matter again what the hue is set to because that is just going to decide which part of the colour spectrum your colour is going to be in and for a fairly middle tone to, uh, colour, again set your hue to whatever your colour that you want it to be, so in this case I set it to the blue spectrum, but you'll find that the saturation and the luminance of the value is roughly sort of in the middle somewhere, not exactly the same values, but uh, they're just middling values, they're not sort of uh, biased in one way or another so that you don't tend to find that the saturation is relatively high compared to the luminance of the value, or indeed vice versa. So the most important thing about greys is just remember to always dial your saturation back to its lowest value and that your luminance or your value is going to determine just how light or dark that grey is. So as you can see, just increasing the luminance will make it lighter and reducing the luminance makes it darker. And of course, obviously at the very bottom it ends up black, at the very top it ends up white. So that's how to create grey scales. So hopefully these little tips will show you how to uh, visualise uh, the tones that you may have in your head or maybe that you've sketched out of how you're going to create those digitally in the colour palette and that really is the power of hue, saturation and luminance. It just makes it so much easier than trying to faff about with the RGB values because by itself it's not so easy to say well I know that I want quite a bit of green and I'm going to need quite a bit of blue to make a mint green and so I probably don't need much red but then actually what you'll find is that you do need red uh, in the mint tones because that is actually what is going to um, reduce the intensity of the green and blue but it's not the most natural of um, thoughts basically and um, because a lot of people would think well I don't want red in this color because I'm creating a green and yeah, that kind of makes sense actually if you look at it like that, but the reality is that when you're creating pastel tones, yes, you do actually need quite a bit of the colour component that you're not really looking to have in your colour, um, or so you may think. To finish off this episode, I'm just going to do a pixel art speed draw of a little sprite character that is going to be based off our foundation sprite that we created a couple of episodes ago, and it's going to be your Vasca Langley Saw You out of Neon Genesis Evangelion, one of my favourite animes of all time. This is just going to be a 16 pixel wide little sprite character and throughout this little speed draw you will see me adjusting the hue, saturation and luminance values of the palette as I create as it goes along. You'll remember this from the previous episode where I said that I build palettes up as I go along and that's exactly what I'm going to do for this little character. We have a of the Earth. Underneath it says, Air Man from the planet Earth, first set foot upon the moon. July 
So I hope you've really enjoyed this episode. I hope that you're going to have more confidence in creating your colour palettes now. And I guess that all remains for me to say is, see you soon. Bye.